Did you know that more than 80% of our oceans are unmapped, unobserved and unexplored? With so much that we do not know, the ocean remains a prime spot to unleash our curiosities and expand what we know. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at some of our ocean discoveries. Great White Shark vs Giant Squid What comes to mind when you think of the scariest creature in the oceans? Did a great white shark swim right in? Well, you would not be wrong, they certainly can be frightening. Also known as the largest predatory fish on the planet, they boast an average length of 15 feet and can weigh up to a massive 5,000 pounds. With a powerful torpedo-shaped body whose tail sends them speeding through the waters, they can then latch onto their prey with their 300 serrated and triangular teeth. However, they might not be the all-fearsome predators you think they are. In fact, evidence suggests that they could even be prey to some larger sea creature out there. That is exactly what a newly released study proves, as scientists believe that somewhere out there in the large Pacific Ocean, these great white sharks are being attacked by massive squids. How so? By the large scars and sucker marks found on the sharks. Although this might sound too similar to a classic prehistoric animal battle movie, there is documented research that such encounters have occurred. They mostly take place in Guadalupe Island near the Baja, California coast. In the examination of 14 great white sharks during a span of five years, most of them developed unique scars on their heads and trunks before they reached full adulthood. Such wounds suggest that a squid tried to defend itself from the shark. Because of their proximity to the volcanic island, which is otherwise known for being a feeding site for the most apex of predators, encounters between sharks and cephalopods are not unique. However, there are not too many documented interactions between great whites and large squids, which makes these findings especially mysterious. It is definitely not impossible either. In the region of great white shark territory, there are several squid hotspots with a huge variety, ranging from foot-long neon flying squids to giant squids that can grow to a huge length of 46 feet. This sheds plenty of light upon the fact that squids play a big role as prey for adult great whites. What is even cooler is the depth at which these fights are taking place. Not only are they deep, but they are also taking place in the twilight zone, which is the layer of water that even sunlight cannot penetrate at about 650 to 3,300 feet deep. In the end, scientists have yet to find direct evidence that proves that giant squids were the ones that caused the sucker marks and scarring. However, they do believe that the culprits are likely the jumbo squid, the neon flying squid, and the giant squid. No matter what, one thing is for sure, these marks are certainly indicative of an extremely aggressive encounter between predator and prey. If the squid is strong enough, then the suction power of their arms and tentacles can deform the shark dermal dentical structure and cause open wounds. It seems that the great white shark may not be the most unchallengeable sea creature out in the ocean. Ancient Structures Below Lake MacDonald Imagine an underwater civilization lost to time and mystery. Did the city of Atlantis pop into your mind? At the heart of many books and movies lies this island, which was once home to a great naval power that disappeared below the surface, never to be seen again. Though the legitimacy of Atlantis may be a mystery forever, it certainly does not mean that there are no real-life lost ancient cultures in the ocean just like it. In fact, one such lost civilization may have just been rediscovered in the depths of Lake Macdonald in Ontario, Canada. On one fateful day, a group of divers decided to participate in a submarine project. By the time they reached a depth of 40 feet, they found a series of oddly shaped structures. At first glance, researchers hypothesized that they were a type of perched erratic, that a bunch of glaciers transported thousands of years ago at the end of the last ice age. However, upon closer observation, the divers noticed that the structures had far more detail worth looking into. That prompted several more scientists and geologists to conclude that the rock assembly was made up of seven gigantic monoliths made by man and not by nature. But how exactly did these rocks get here? 
Is there a chance that they could have fallen on top of each other in a perfect structure by chance? To find the answers, the experts turn to maths and statistics. As predicted, the numbers only reported that even rocks forming such a structure were almost impossible. To have seven rocks be situated in such a position was practically unthinkable. So, one thing was for certain, this was no work of Mother Nature. Knowing that, scientists decided to look for the next obvious signs of human involvement in possible tool use or other decorative images. They first found a layer of sediment, which indicated that no human had touched the rocks in quite a long time. So, when did the last humans touch these stones, and who were they? How did they manage to haul these giant objects and put them in such a position? For the many visitors who often visited the Halliburton Forest where the structure was located, they noted how aesthetically pleasing the rocks almost seemed to be. For them, it almost looked quite similar to an Arctic Inukshuk. To try to find more answers, researchers tried to draw upon the history of the land. Thousands of years ago, they discovered that the areas had suffered bouts of constant droughts. Because the land was very arid and dry, the waters of the Great Lakes were actually around 50 meters lower. That certainly happened to Lake MacDonald as well. In conclusion, biologists determined that the lake was home to ancient glacial relic lake trout that had survived multiple bouts of glaciation. It was not always a lake either. It turns out that it was actually part of an ancient river system that had funneled glacial meltwater south into the once existing Lake Agassiz for millennia. There is no doubt that many questions and mysteries still swirl around these unique underwater structures. However, we do know that ancient cultures are most likely more advanced than we give them credit for. Perhaps they might just point to evidence of an era in humankind's history that we have never yet discovered. Zombie Greenhouse Gases in the Arctic Climate change is only increasing in speed, and part of that may be due to the fault of the Arctic Ocean. Did you know that each year, millions of tons of organic carbon and methane in the area thaw and ooze out to the surface? The carbon tied up in the organic matter and methane is found trapped in the subsea permafrost, which is also frozen sediment that became covered by seawater at the end of the Paleolithic Ice Age. Even though this zombie greenhouse gas could really impact the environment, it is hard to gather data on how fast the gases are leaking because the sediment is in such a remote and inaccessible area. However, two emerging theories have resulted. One of them, and arguably the scariest of the two, is that this greenhouse gas reservoir is a ticking time bomb that is bound to explode and suddenly spew into the atmosphere, which would trigger a climate disaster. The other tamer one is that instead of an explosion-like release, the gases will continue to ooze into our atmosphere as they have for centuries. Humans, however, have the capability to make the situation worse by speeding up the rate of release. At most, the acceleration would take place over several more centuries and not in the course of a few decades or years. Still, it is pretty frightening just to hear about how much zombie greenhouse gases are lurking beneath the surface. In attempting to capture a comprehensive picture of the ecosystem, they came to the startling conclusion that the permafrost holds about 60 billion tons of methane and 560 billion tons of organic carbon. On top of that, about 140 million tons of carbon dioxide and 5.3 million tons of methane escape from that permafrost into the atmosphere every year. In terms of comparison, that is almost equal to the carbon footprint of the entire country of Spain. From that data, experts arrived at the conclusion that over the next 300 years, the rate of greenhouse gas emissions from the subsea permafrost is only likely to substantially increase if carbon emissions from human activity continue to function as normal. Though more research is likely to change everything, there is no mystery about it that we as humans are linked to this permafrost below the cold Arctic Ocean. The part we play in it can impact the entire planet as we know it. But what do you make of these three interesting ocean discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.